Okay, the first step is always the same. If you take the derivative of both sides, it means you apply the derivative operator to both halves of the equation. That is legal per algebra. Per algebra. Yep. Because of algebra, this is legal. As long as you maintain equality, you can perform the same operation to both sides of the equation. Okay, warning here. Warning, warning. When people see tangent of 3x cubed, some people think this. Scary Okay. That's not what you're looking at. You're looking at this. Okay. Well, only the x is being cubed, nothing else. Yeah. I'm just saying people get mixed up. Oh, okay. Only the x is being cubed. <coughs> Question? Yeah. Wait, please, okay. Is the only time we know that 3x is being cubed is if it's all in like given to us like that? So they could give you this one. They could say tangent of 3x cubed like that. That's, that could happen. It's not as common as it could. Uh, this one here is of a particular importance. Um, I'll pay five points for this one, five tallies. Hands up if you know the weight. Like, you'll never see it written this way. <coughs> On an AP test, they will always write it a different way. You should have seen this in a previous class. Hands up if you know how you will see this on an AP test, the blue one. Five. Uh, they won't write it this way. Like, oh, they, like, like when, they they write indicate, it? when they want to indicate that you have the tangent of 3x all being cubed, it will not be written like that. How will they write it? Five tallies. You should have seen this in a previous class. If not, we'll learn it right now. Legend. Can I need help? Would it be 3 tan 3x cubed? No, but two points for trying. Five tallies. You can try again, I don't mind. So what's this going to be, Jay? Two points, but no. Lizzie? There you go. Uh, that's where I kind of felt. Okay. Anyone else besides Lizzie have their hand raised and would have said that? Five points. Listen. So, okay, we're not doing the green quite yet. I'm just alerting you to something that obviously you needed to see. Yes. Because two people in the room knew it. <laughs> okay. They will not show it in this fashion. They'll always show it in this fashion. But you must remember that this means this. Why is it the 3x cubed? Uh, just because that's how they decided to make the notation. It's just why your name is London because your parents said your name would be London. Okay, so it's just like yeah. just cause? Yeah, it is just cause. Okay. Yeah. And, sorry, second question. Um, if it was written like the tan three x we know it looks like that other way, right? So would we use the, because I know there's like a tangent rule, right? Would we use the tangent rule or would we use the power rule? Okay, three points for London. She's asking exactly the right question. Look, we haven't done the green yet, so focus. Come on. She's asking exactly the right question. You are trying to find a derivative of this. It's not going to say find the derivative of the blue. It's not going to look like this. It's going to look like this. Okay, so when you see that, show me your hands. I'll pay you the way. I just want you to vote. Are you going to use the power rule first or the tangent rule first? This ties into Emma's question. Are you going to use the tangent rule first or the power rule first? And what you're looking for is a rule that looks exactly like, like what you're starting with. The rule must match exactly with what you are starting with. Let's go, Mr. Lewis. Tangent. So Steven says tangent. So let's check and see if it works. You're good, look. So you've got ddx, right? This one's hard to see, so I'm gonna point you over here because that's the same. So you've got ddx of this, 
If we're going to use the tangent rule, what would you say the g of x is? 9x Oh, which one? Yeah, tangent 3x cubed. Wait, but you already have tangent cubed. I don't know. Tangent is cubed. We would all use our own person. I know. Yeah, hey. Side of Mason Tarkin. So you have to use the power rule because the tangent 3x is 0 power. Yeah, the tangent rule does not work. The tangent rule absolutely does not work. You are starting with a power function. You have something that is being cubed. Okay. That something is your g of x. That's you have to start with power. If the equation is the origin, you absolutely use the tangent rule first, because what you're starting with is a tangent of something. The power is within the tangent. <coughs> Good. Two points for <coughs> T. Sorry. Name the same. You good? Um, I called you K. Sorry. I called Tegan K. Good. We're all good. Move on. <coughs> yeah, I just want to that. Okay, so here we go. So we have dy over dx. Do you always do dy over the x? Um, be different. No. No. What I will always do is whatever equation they give me, I will apply the derivative operator to both halves. Everyone memorize that. Hey, no, sorry, asked a good question. It's not just automatically dy dx. You got to think of what you're doing. This class is not about following steps. It's about thinking as you go. So. Is it's M. Taylor. She's on the wall. <laughs> Good to see you. Welcome home. That one. When did you get home? Wow. Good to see you. M is a. a M's on the wall. That's all you gotta say. You know, so. Which 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 picture that says Calc 2017? Correct. Yes. All right. I'm having a hard time remembering. I got too many students. Wait. So. Right. Right here. Big big letters. All up there. There you go. You know, in the marbles, it's really big and hard to miss. I was no. looking for a picture of her on the wall. London. I was looking for a picture of her on the wall. Uh, I was like, I don't uh, see said picture. That was quite a bit. So older than yeah, she's a couple years past. Where did she know? That was like two years ago? Yeah. Well, she graduated in 2007. Oh, must have been then. Oh, my God. I lose track. It's really good to see you. Sorry, I got to keep going. No, you're good. You're good. It's really good to see you. Um, um, M killed me. We got a five, so yeah. Um, solid flex. So use the tangent rule first. So this be, this is just, look, you can write that as y prime if you want. Using the tangent rule, this becomes one over. Cosine squared of 3x squared times the derivative of 3x squared. Please. Is it cute? Oh, it is. Yeah, that's my mistake. Apologies. doesn't mean tangent cubed. 
this is the tangent of 3 multiplied by x being cubed. So only the x is being cubed. The example, yeah, the example we gave before was different. Questions? So, Sheila. this is a totally different problem than when I said for each of the tangent. This is totally different. Yeah, you had that one wrong. This one we do have to use the tangent. Oh. That's, yeah. hey, quiet, come on. That's why I showed you the other ones. Because that's where people make really easy mistakes. You've got to keep them separate. Um, why wouldn't you use the uh, Awesome question. Okay, five points for Tate. Look, five points. Listen, exactly what I wanted you to ask. Look here. Okay, turns out that one over cosine is the same thing as secant. They're just trig identity. So one over cosine squared is the same thing as secant squared. Now, on the written portion of the AP test, you're free to use either one. They mean the same thing, so both answers are correct. But on the multiple choice section, you don't get to choose. You have to find their answer. I have seen cases where they use this. I've seen cases where they use this. So you just have to know both. That's hot. Good to hear? If it's multiple choice, it matters a lot. Because they're only going to have one of the two answers. You have to recognize both of them. So they would never have both of them? Oh, no. They'll have one or the other. Okay. Hands up. What rule gets used now? Come on, show me hands. Think with me. Do not just sit and walk. Think with me. What rule gets used now? <laughs> Ellie. Did you do the power rule on that right one? So over here, we can't use the power rule yet because we have the same problem as before. We have oh, three. Right. No worries. Multiplied by x being q. So you do the Multiplying constant. So now I get this. Then you do this. So you don't need to do the one of the rows to the entire. <coughs> Wait, so you, you look. You have to look. Hey, look. I, you're saying all the right things. You're making all the regular mistakes. So it's good. The DDX operator is not applied to this. Yeah. See, two points for Sam. Look, what you're doing. Hey, you're all struggling to break a habit. Your habit is, don't understand what I do, just copy what I do. And so instead of understanding how to use the operator, you're just trying to say, oh, well, last time you kind of did this, so I'm going to do the same thing. No, I never worked on this, ever. You've got to make this match with one of the rules. So I say, don't, don't try to succeed in this class by copying. Succeed by understanding how the rule works and applying it. Big brain. Every time. So that's what I did before I figured it out. I was like, wait, none of the big brain. Don't be smart. Be big brain. You need a slogan on the wall for that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though. Wait, Sam, what was that? I'll make a post for you. So don't, don't be small. Be okay, <laughs> question. Please. Basically, okay. Uh, so how did you get from that? How did you know to use the multiplying constant? Gotcha. So first of all, are you okay that I'm not doing anything with this? Because there's no DDX operator. Okay. So I'm only looking here. And that's how it always works, there's right? Not a, um, the DDX operator thing, you don't need to change it yet. The whole reason, look, everybody look here. The whole reason we can use the operator is because of the rule. The rule says if you have this, you can instead write this. You can't do anything with this, it doesn't fit the rule at all. There's no DDX. Okay. This doesn't fit the power rule because what you see is 3 multiplied by x to the third. The power rule only allows for whatever to a power, not 3 times whatever to a power. So the constant rule is fine. You just pull out the constant. Now we use the power rule. So you, can't, you cannot in the power rule have a constant in there. Correct. It does not allow for it. Now, I will tell you in a few days, I can give you kind of an additional shortcut that combines these two and makes it a little bit faster. But give it a couple of days. Please. Thank you so much. See you later, Sorry. So the one over the cosine squared that's cubed is part of our answer. So that's like the when we did 46, that's like the 3x. Yes. So we're not touching that part for the rest of the class. Correct. And hey, every single time, look, 
every single time you are finding a derivative, that pattern will repeat itself. You will apply a rule, the rule will reveal a portion of the final answer. Then you have a new problem to work on. It's right here. Got to work on this. We apply a rule, it revealed a new portion of the final answer. Now you're not going to do anything with the three either. Now we need to work on this little problem. Okay, please. Okay, I just want to know, is it okay if, like, since we already know that 1 over cosine squared to 3x to the power of 3, we know that's no longer going to change, so can we just not write that in the next thing and just go down and then put it in Really good question. Um, so, three points for Kenzie, but this is what will happen if you do that. Yeah, I won't let you retake if you do that. Because the AP test writers won't give you credit. They won't let you retake either. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Unless <laughs> yeah. you take You need to write it, Kenzie. Unless you take calc again. Don't do this. Don't take calc again. Smith, I love you so much. I'm in the good man. No. <laughs> hey, don't do this. Don't just, you know, do no marks. They, you can't get credit for that. You have to write it out. Now, look. Wait, why would you ever need ditto marks? Because this is the same. So, But do don't do ditto, ditto marks. Ditto marks. Ditto marks. <laughs> don't do ditto marks. Please. So, read the constant that's on the top of the not the Listen. Okay, everybody, look. This right here can be thought of differently. You choose, everyone you like best. It can be this. Or it can be thought of as this. They're the same thing. Is that okay? Are you okay? It's easy to waste. Once we do this for like longer, you're going to tell us like when we're allowed to like when okay, stop for a minute. So Sammy can't talk. Sam can't talk or I can't hear. Go ahead. So I know you said that after a while doing this, like after you guys skip from like mm -hmm. the red step just to the green step or whatever, if you did that on the AP test, like the steps that you did, they mark you down for not showing that in between step? Good question. So on the AP test, there is actually in this type of process, there is no requirement for how much you have to show. Oh, okay. So the whole reason you are writing a lot in the beginning is because I have learned through sad experience, if you don't, then you, get you get really mixed okay. up, and you expect me to help you, and I, I can't. Like, you don't even I don't even know what happened. I don't know what's going on inside yeah. your head. Okay. For our both of the legal, like on the AP test, to not write all the steps and to write like, the three or the Oh, yeah. yeah. And actually, like I said before, you'll eventually just kind of go this and then this and you're done. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Other questions here? Okay, here's the other thing you should be noticing. Look, at this point, there's nothing new to learn. On a previous problem, you already saw how to handle this. Oh, we had yeah. x to the fourth before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just x to the third. Just do the same rule again. Dude, I think I get this. Once you get the look, and we'll testify. Once you get the hang of finding a derivative, that is not the problem with this class, right? That's not the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh great, there's something harder. Oh yeah. Um, but you can do it. You just take time, right? Yeah. M got a five, or sister got a five, you know. So. I'm um, in their families. <laughs> no, uh, both Em and Lauren, they got fives because they work hard at it. Now, hey, Macy's question is very valid. You do have to keep track of what's denominator, what's numerator. Um, in this expression, you know this is on the bottom because it's one over. The three all by itself is like, you know, you can put a one under if it helps, 
But if there's no one above it, it's the numerator. The same would be true for these. Okay. Please. What rule did you use to get the three x squared, like at the very end? Power rule. Yeah. So this three. Kenzie went to here. Now I've got x cubed. So in the power rule, my g is now x, and the n is 3. And you see it. It's a work. Two points. Other hands? Uh -huh. So to use the power rule, all you're doing is making a match. You come up here and you go, okay, here's d dx. This is also ddx. This says something being cubed. This something is called x. Over here, it's something to a power. This something is called g. So it's exactly the same, just different symbols, same meaning. So g of x and x in this use? Yes, in this, in this use. Yeah. Now, every time you use the power rule, g of x will be different. Okay. But in this usage, g of x is just that. So, uh, this is what I'm going to write. Okay. Equal says they're the same, so instead of writing this here, I can write this. Oh. And that's all I did. Is it 3x three, three cubed or is it 3 squared? So the n is 3, see it? Uh -huh. yeah. And the g is what? Oh, g okay. is x, right? Okay. Yeah, I got it. The new exponent is 3 minus 1, which okay. is 2. You're good. Okay. Okay, dx over dx. Make sure you write that. In a couple of days, you're gonna you're going to do problems where instead of being dx over dx, it'll be dy over dx. If you haven't followed my instructions and written it out, you'll forget. You get all messed up. I will not help, bruh. Okay. <laughs> Rip something. Go. Um, question. So yes. on the final step you have listed here. I see, I, I, I understand where the 3 over 1 came from, I understand where the 3x squared over 1 came from, I understand where the denominator of dx came from, and I understand where the d came from, I don't understand where that very last x came from. Right here, right? Yes. Awesome. Talk with me and you'll figure it out. Ready? Yep. You're okay that we're using the power rule? Yeah. So, in this usage of the power rule, what's g of x? g of x is, is it, you got to move your hands, right? You're good. It's x cubed, x. The 3 is the cube. The 3 is the cube. So what's the g of x? x. Just x. Yes. So at the end of the rule, what does it say? To put g of x, so it's just x. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then if it happened to be anything other than x, you'd have to continue working. Yes. Uh, Perfect. Uh, okay. All right, Perfect. There we go. Look. That was <laughs> hey. True. No, it's exactly what I want you to see. It's exactly what you should see. Look here. You said it perfectly. My point. Look. D of G over DX, right? So earlier in the process, G of X was like 3X cubed. So here we have D of 3X cubed. We've created another problem that needs to be resolved. But when we get to this point, we're done. Because all we have is DX over DX. That's it. That's how you know whether you keep going or stop. How would you get a DY of that? Uh, that you'll have to kind of wait to get. It's just hard to show you, but you'll see it. So my, what I want you doing is just make sure you write DX over DX so you won't forget. Please, everyone. Where did the second 3 come from? So there's 3 and then 3 X squared. Yeah. Where did this one here? Yeah. So you okay that we're using the power rule? Yeah. So we're going to write this, right? So what's in? So that's where it came from. Okay, then where are the other three? Right there. Oh, okay. You with me? You good? Can you show again where that second three came from? So you're okay with using the power rule? Yes. So what's in? N is three. So that's the three? Oh, because it was left over from before. No, here's the leftover. Well, yeah, that's, the, that's what I mean. Oh, that I got you. My bad. I get so you. So that one is coming from. Yeah. The three here is the leftover. The new three is from the power rule. Okay, I got you. Please, take. Um, would you put the dx over dx in the final answer? No. 
Now you notice that dx over dx is 1. And now we combine some terms and we write 9x squared over cosine squared 3x cubed. So um, listen close. Uh, five points for Delaney. Okay? You you all need to look at this. This is a common mistake to look at that and think that you can do something. But no. You cannot. But you know why you cannot. If you don't know the whys in this class, you're always going to be confused. Um, because none of them have the same, uh, like the same product. Like none of them have the same product. Like the 9x squared and the 3x cubed looks like you should be able to, but because it's a squared and a cube, they're not oh, equal. Oh, two points, but no. Oh. It's okay. That's not the reason. Keegan. Uh, DDX operated mean we got to start using a rule. That's a good answer. Yeah. Two points. The um, thing I'm worried about is this. We're getting close to the bell here. Sorry. Look. You need to memorize the following words. You must memorize the following words. Let me say it before you write anything down. When you have a fraction like this, okay, unless the top is factored and the bottom is factored, and you are dividing your mom's outside the door now. Um, if the top is factored and the bottom is factored. So yeah, she's right there. So if the top is factored, ah, okay. If the top is factored and the bottom is factored, you can divide factor. But unless that's true, you can. So this numerator is factored. Factors of the numerator can be said lots of different ways. You could say 9 and x squared. Those are two factors. Trouble is, the bottom is like one big factor, or maybe two. This really means cosine of 3x cubed times cosine of 3x cubed. Because it's cosine squared. So it's cosine of 3x cubed times cosine of 3x cubed. The 3x cubed is inside the cosine. It's not a multiply. It's not a factor. So you can't divide because it's not a factor. Only divide when you're dividing factors. So you can't do that. Cool. Bell ring in a minute. Good work. No horn tonight. No homework tonight? That's big. Yes.